Hello everybody, there's Todd here from Bike Ohio 1000. I'm here at Lock 39 of the Ohio to Erie Towpath Trail, uh, just uh, near uh, Rockside Road and I-480 Freeway. And I have the Erie Canal right over here. Um, and today, um, and I, let me jump back. Uh, I just recently completed the Ohio to Erie Trail. And during my research, um, found several people really struggling with how to get in to Cleveland like those last 10 to 12 miles. So I thought as a kind of a public service and a way to get out and do another ride today, uh, I'm going to video and map out those last last few miles that help everybody along. And so where we are here at Lock 39, you're really at the, the northern edge of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. So if you've made it this far, congratulations, you're not far from the lake. Um, if you've come, come through the park uh, the last 22 miles since you kind of exited the Akron and got onto the Boson uh, trailhead there at about 33 mile marker. Uh, you've ridden on uh, crushed limestone, some boardwalks, a little bit of asphalt. As you get here at this point at Lock 39, you're gonna go straight on to asphalt the rest of the way. Um, I'm gonna take you two different routes uh, and I'll, I'll point out where the transition point is uh, as we go forward. Uh, so from this point forward going north, um, it's, it's clearly marked trail. Uh, we're going to go up through about another six or seven miles. Then we'll go off trail, so to speak, where you hit Harvard Road. We jig and jog through the Steel Yards Commons. Again, clearly marked trail, green paint on the, on the trail, and takes you all the way into Tremont, uh, Tremont script sign. Uh, we'll go and see the Hope Memorial Bridge where the Cleveland Guardians are hanging out. We'll show you where that trail splits and where you can either go the traditional route along the shoreway or the newer way possibly is over the Wendy Bridge and along uh, Whiskey Island in that route. Uh, so I'll be stopping, taking pictures, uh, and I'll also be dropping in some maps along the way. So uh, let's enjoy the ride. Here we go. So I hope you find this video helpful as far as navigating from Edgewater into the Cuyahoga Valley National Park or from the National Park into Edgewater Park. Um, as, I was, as I mentioned earlier, um, researching my ride on the Ohio Erie Trail, uh, several people mentioned the struggles of navigating the section, so I thought I'd try and help it out with a little bit. It's long, it's detailed, but hopefully it's helpful. So again, we're starting here at Lock 39 Trailhead, uh, Rockside Road and Canal Road in Valley View, Ohio. Uh, you're essentially at the northern terminus of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. And at this section, the uh, limestone goes away and you're uh, on uh, asphalt the rest of the way and we're heading north and using roughly the reference of about the 11 mile marker, you're actually in between 11 and 10 on those uh, mile markers. So we are headed north, uh, really only had to cross one street uh, for the first six, seven miles, that's Old Rockside Road. And other than that, you're on uh, asphalt trail. Rockside Road, headed north. So heading north here, we have the, the canal on our right. Um, in this section, you're, you're gonna see, uh, kind of let's call it the uh, industrial underbelly of Cleveland as we go through Street Yard Commons. Um, but uh, you're gonna see a couple of really cool pedestrian bridges. So let's enjoy the day. All right, Hopefully so coming rain. up is one of the first of the two uh, pedestrian bike bridges. Again, canal still on the right. I did fail to mention uh, at Lock 39, it's about the 11 mile marker on the trail uh, as we head up. This is about a mile and a half up the trail. Pretty cool. And bridge number two. All right, we're about ready to pop out 
of the park here. And we're about six miles in from our start point at lot 39 and the 11 mile marker. Mile five marker. I must have missed that before. All right, so we're popping out here on the road. Actually not on the road, uh, but there's a bike trail. We're gonna turn left here. I believe this is Harvard Road. The next section really um, for some people is as we exit the true like park feel, and that's gonna be at Harvard Road. Um, you'll exit the trailhead, uh, you'll see a road in front of you, uh, there's a bike path on your left. So you're gonna turn left, um, go over a rail bridge, a uh, brand new bridge, or excuse me, a new, new bridge, then over some tracks, and then you come to an intersection that's Jennings Road. All this is like 100 yards, by the way, too. And you're gonna turn right on Jennings Road. That's really important. Turn right, go to the street, uh, green painted path, going up the hill towards Steel Yards County. All right, so exiting the park, bike route, Tremont. I'm gonna turn left. Woohoo! All right. Getting some rain and we got a lot of wind going here. I'll take this the whole way as long as it's safe. I might have to grab both my bars and put the camera down when we go across the railroad tracks up here. This is pretty new. This used to be a little on-road section less than maybe two years ago. All right, hands hands back on the so bars. So here we are at Jennings Road. So we're turning right and the bike path takes us up along Jennings Road and we're headed to Steel Yard. All right, cross the path. There's another set of tracks up here. And this is fairly new. A couple of short street crossings and just follow that bike route Tremont sign right, right here. We can relax for a little bit. Those streets across for a little while. And this is going to lead us into Steel Yards Commons. And you'll see why it's called that in a minute. So we're entering Steel Yards Commons. Uh, another shot here. Um, again, just following the map along where we are. Um, you'll, it's a, again, paved trail, retail on your left. You'll see the steel yards on your right. So we roll through Steel Yard Commons. So we do have uh, a newer retail area, I'm trying to help revitalize this area on the back side of it. And over here on our right is the industrial uh, backbone of Cleveland. Couple of tunnels. Just another close up view of going through. So then we, the next little point is Quigley Road. So as you leave the steel yards, uh, you'll come to a crossroad bike path cross road and there's a little roundabout looking thing, <coughs> Quigley Road. Uh, as I mentioned in the video, you can actually spin around right and go up the hill, um, which would be, let me see if I can draw here, uh, which would be up here. Um, and you can actually get on West 14th and ride north and bypass um, some of the um, the trail if you wanted to. We're not going to do that. Also, if you want to go to the um, Christmas, Christmas Story House, that's the way you want to go. So if you want to go that way, you can actually ride all the way up West 14th, or you can also cut across um, through the park, Lincoln Park, and and again, continue on up to Abbey Road. We're gonna follow that purple trail, that's the bike trail, but it'll make more sense when you see the, uh, 
the rest of the trail. All right, when you come out of that second tunnel, you can actually shoot off to the right if you want and go up the hill. It's a little roundabout. That's gonna be West 14th Street. And if you're going to, if you were looking for the, uh, hang on a second. If you're looking for the Christmas Story house, you can take this, I think I believe it's Quigley, spin around, go up to West 14th, go down about two streets, it's easily marked, the Christmas Story house. And you can also take West 14th and just keep going north. Um, if you want, it's actually a little shorter, I'll show you on the map. It's, it's a bike path on, you know, street, but bike path. And just take that all the way to Abbey Road. But we're gonna take the trails. It's a little bit, a little bit of a loop, but I think more scenic and um, I think it's the way it was intended. Again, you can ride up, it's, it's a bike path but it is street riding, and I think most of us are trying to avoid most of that. Uh, but as you can see with the star ends, uh, we're all gonna wind up in the same path if we take the trail or ride up West 14th. Here just uh, just past Steel Yards is a really our first glimpse of downtown Cleveland. Next little, um, visual, if you will, or a site is the Towpath Mounds. <laughs> okay, we got a short little climb out of the steel yards up to what's called the Tremont Mounds. Feel free to hop off and climb on up and get a little aerial view. Here's another cool shot, little observation area. Stop for a second. Get a really good shot of the steel yards. So just keep right, heading north and keep following the green paint. I love the downhill. Just traveling on the trail, popping up the map, give you some references of where we are. All right, really starting to head where you can see skyline. And a nice, soft little climb. This is not Glenmont. <laughs> These are all pretty brand new. So a lot of renovation, a lot of, a lot of new building, bringing people back downtown. Up here is a little rail heritage spot and a really new pedestrian bike bridge. This used to be where it would end. You'd have to go off road. I mean, literally only two years ago. So a lot, lots changing. Bike friendly Cleveland. West 6th, excuse me. West 6th. Go for a swing. Check. Okay, the University Inn. West 13th and University. This is a landmark. I'll show you on the map. Great views. And I'm gonna take a little little side side view here. So we're gonna be going down that trail right there to the right. And then we roll into Abbey Road and University, and this is the 10 mile marker, 10 mile point from lot 39 going into the town. I wanna to take you over here really quick, kind of a little loop around. So this is Abbey Road. So if you would have taken West 14th, and that was the 10 mile beep, by the way, exactly 10 miles from the trailhead at lot 39, to Abbey Road and University. So if you would have went to see the Christmas Story House and came down West 14th, here is West 14th right here at Abbey Road. So you could have just came down on the street, hit this, and then the trail's right down there. 
that's why I bring you here. Is a location, one of the famous Cleveland script signs. So stop there. You go, Tremont, get a Cleveland script sign. All right, so we're gonna loop back here, get back on the trail. And here's probably really next, as I, as I mentioned verbally in the video as well, but the next point of the navigation, really important. So we go under the bridges. All right, so back on this trail. And there's some great photo ops. I know it might be hard to hear at the wind. But Cleveland's definitely a city of bridges. Old and new. Lift bridges, swing bridges. Uh, after we've taken a look at the script sign, going on the bridges, we come down this hill and there's a little fork in the road. Uh, Towpath to your right, Centennial Link to your left. It's really, really important. We're going to veer to the left and take the Centennial Link Trail. So one's kind of going down, and the Centennial Link Trail is going to go up to your left. Take that trail. All right, this is one of the, we just literally came down the hill. This is one of the most important signs for this whole trip, is we want to take the Centennial Link. You can take the towpath, and you're going to have to get off on the road. So the towpath only goes about another mile this way. Centennial Link goes up here. We're actually going to go underneath the Hope Memorial Bridge with the Guardians and I'll get you there and then we're this is how we're gonna go to Edgewater Park all right so veer left here and go up the hill. Left. really important up the hill looks like rain again the Guardians of the Hope Memorial Bridge That trail is going to take you under the um, Hope Memorial Bridge, as I pointed out, and the Guardians. And then the next major intersection for navigation really is when the Centennial Link Trail ends and you're at Columbus Road. And you're going to see to your right, you're going to see the Columbus um, a lift bridge, big green bridge. That's your landmark. And it's also, remember, important when we reference back of taking the Wendy Bridge Trail this would be our starting point <laughs> because when we do the Wendy Bridge Trail, we're actually going to turn right and go across the Columbus Bridge. So point of, point to remember that. But for the traditional riders um, taking the, the Lake Lake Shore uh, bike trail, um, we're going to do a little quick little jig and jog here at Centennial Lake, and we're going to go up the hill up Franklin to West 25th. All right, we're coming up to Columbus Road. It's the big green bridge here. Really important landmark. So I'm gonna stop here. So we're really at the corner here of Riverbend and Columbus. There's Hoople's. There's the Columbus Bridge. Just down there on the right is the Foundry, another Cleveland script sign, and Brick and Barrel on your left, Great Brewery. So, why I say that is, this is like the split off point. If we want to go to the Windy Bridge, we're going down Columbus. Uh, if we're going the traditional route up to West 25th, we're going to hop up here over here on Franklin and ride up Franklin to West 25th. And that's what we're going to do. So again, there's the, the lift bridge. That's our, this is our intersection and we're going up the hill. Come up the hill to West 25th. We are turning right. All right, so coming up Franklin here in a sec to West 25th. We're gonna turn right, heading north. There are some friendly green arrows being on the, on the trail as well. Turning right on West 25th. And then the next really navigation point is as soon as you cross over Detroit Avenue, and that is a, a major intersection. There are bike paths on West 25th. Um, 
not too busy of a street generally. Um, and we're only talking a couple hundred yards really from where we got off in Franklin to where we cross over on Detroit. As soon as you cross over Detroit, get in the left-hand turn lane and you're gonna look for basically it's a sidewalk uh, where the bike path trail marker is. Uh, do not go underneath those uh, viaducts, those the big freeways, you've gone too far. So as soon as you go over, that's really important. As soon as you cross over Detroit, look left, the sidewalk. And it's kind of funky here because you're going to turn left, go down that trail, and you're only going to go like a block. And that's where you do that right on West 28th, go under the under under the overpasses and then turn left. And the bike trail's there, it's yellow paint, it's, it's pretty clear, but that's probably the toughest navigation of this whole way. Once you're on that trail, <laughs> you're good to go all the way to West 73rd. You can turn right on West 25th. We're gonna take this down just past Detroit. Brookhouse Brewing, highly recommend it. And Detroit Road, right here where that bridge is where it says, I love you very much. Turn, Turn left. As soon as you cross over Detroit, it's Edgewater Parkway. Don't go there. Turn left. And now on the westbound lakefront bikeway, it'll take you all the way to Edgewater Park. So again, that little jig and jog, slow down, pay attention. Um, as soon as you go over to Detroit, turn left, look for the bike path sign. Um, you go, I mean, it seems like 100 feet and you turn right on West 28th and you go under those freeways. And as soon as you get finished that, the back bike path, again, yellow paint, turn left and you're on your right and another left I think that's where I have had had issues in the past all right on the trail the big blue water tower is a good landmark out there is Lake Erie just across West. the street from the Garrett Morgan uh, School. This is the Cleveland uh, Soapbox Derby Hill. We found uh, West 49th. Ah, next time, maybe. Gordon Square. Father Caruso Drive. Landmark, the Edison at Gordon Square. Fine urban living. All right, see that big uh, smokestack up there. Another brewery, Terrestrial Brewing. Check that one out too, after you finish. All right, so you're at the West 73rd. You're at the end of this trail. You're gonna go through a little, little tunnel, you pop out, and you're gonna be able to see the marina and Edgewater Park basically across the freeway. All oh, these bicycle guys. Through an underpass, slowing down. And you'll be able to see the lake and the marina. Edgewater Park's right over there. Down the hill. Huh. 
really important. Go under that underpass right here. I believe this is West 73rd. Green Arrow, thank you. Water Park. And if you're taking the Wendy Beach route, you're, you're actually taking the Wendy in, Beach route. Stop. So we just came, let me move forward primarily. We just came under that underpass. And if you come under the underpass and go left up the hill, the Cleveland script sign is up there at the top of the hill, way back right. If you're taking the Wendy Beach route along the lake, you'll actually come, come in from this direction on the roundabout and just keep going. We'll do that in a second. West 73rd is your exit. Do not continue on along the bike trail. Go, go across the street under the freeway and you'll pop out at Edgewater Park. So as you enter the park, you'll see a roundabout in front of you. Interesting is that another landmark, that's if you turn right, you'd actually take you towards the Wendy Bridge and that's where you're gonna come in when you take the Wendy Bridge is that point on the roundabout. So everything from here to the Cleveland script sign is gonna be the same. So you can do all different kinds. You really can't get lost. Just keep the lake on your right shoulder and just keep riding through the park. It's not too big, uh, but the Cleveland script sign, which is everybody's photo stop for either the very beginning or very end of the ride, is the top section, the upper section of the park. Boom. So if you want to dip your tire, Lake Erie's right there. So to find the script sign, so there's the lake. To find the script sign, just keep heading west along the shoreline. And there's a little uphill, nothing crazy. You're almost there. All right, keep headed west past the beach. And the sign's up there on the right. Edgewater Park in the Cleveland so script from, sign. So Todd Pike, Ohio, 1000 again. Hey, so from uh, the Lock 39 and taking the traditional route along uh, the Lake Shore Trail, if you, the bike trail, was almost exactly 14 miles. So 14 miles from Lock 39 to the Cleveland script sign. Hope you had a good ride. And now we're gonna, we're gonna backtrack and do Wendy, the Wendy Bridge section. <clears throat> All right, so if you're gonna take the Wendy Bridge route, we're gonna backtrack again here to where the, the Centennial Link ends there at Columbus Road. Now, in the video, I'm riding it from Edgewater back to this point. So, uh, what's it? on my map, I mapped it from this point going towards Edgewater Park. So you're gonna turn right here, and you're gonna go across the Columbus Bridge, boom, boom, boom. Actually, the foundry is right here, and if you wanna get another picture of another sign, they're not all over, there's only six in the city, but everybody seems to like does this photo op, so uh, you can pull in there if you'd like. And uh, um, but continuing north is again, if you're on road, uh, but maybe 300, 400 yards at the most. The key is when you go up to, you're going to see a Sunoco station um, that is uh, the corner of Center and Columbus. Uh, you're going to turn left at the Sunoco sign and you're going to cross over the center bridge, the center street bridge. And as soon as you come across the bridge, you're going to turn left on Detroit Avenue, not Detroit. It's, it's like the old Detroit Avenue. Um, you can actually can just continue on if you want to ride on the street and you continue on to straight up center street. because That's where we're headed. Um, but if you turn left on Center Ave, and again, you're going like this up the hill, like 75 feet, uh, and it is marked. Uh, the Centennial Link Trail takes you this way. It is a nice little trail, it's marked. Uh, go through a couple bridges, and you come out here onto River. You're gonna dead end, you're gonna turn right, and you're gonna cross the River Street Bridge. Um, and as I videoed that, <coughs> Um, it's kind of a narrow as far as the walkway section across the bridge and some people complain that they're meeting people head on there's not enough room for people to pass and they have to wait I've never had a problem um, you go across th that bridge um, there's only one way to go uh, there's a little loop-de-loop -loop. Uh, it's all brand new and you go over the Wendy Bridge 
and when you come over the Wendy Bridge, you just get on the like the Whiskey Island Trail, and it is a bar bike path, and it is maybe a mile, and you just keep heading west, lake on your right, and you'll run right into Edgewater Park. So again, you do a little loop-de-loop. -loop. So come across the bridge, the River Street Bridge, the Windy Bridge is right here. If you want to go out to the Coast Guard Station, you can ride out here for a quick little view, a little pier. Uh, but we're just taking this Whiskey Island uh, Drive. There's a bike trail all the way along. and It'll take you again straight into Edgewater Park. And here is that roundabout where I had the picture. Um, this is where we came in on 73rd from the traditional route. So either way, you can go, you can come this way or you can come in from this way. Um, I, I don't know, I think this is, this way is a little easier, um, less turns, um, but the mileage is about the same as well. I hope that helped. All right, we're back at the uh, Edgewater Park roundabout where we entered off uh, West 73rd. And now we're going to backtrack, only we're going to take the Wendy Bridge section. It's basically that trail runs right along the lake. So we're going to ride due east, for your reference, ride across, basically cross over, heading east, whereas before, we would have went underneath that bridge and up and over West 73rd to get on the, the lakefront trail. So here we go. So we're really just riding parallel uh, to the previous trail that we came out on. Only we're much closer to the lake and it accesses a couple of parks right along the lake. Uh, I think personally a little more simplistic from a navigational standpoint, but uh, uh, you make your own decisions. Wonderful waste treatment center. Can't miss that with your nose. Wendy Park. Not quite a mile from the Edgewater Roundabout. There's the bridge. The left, right will take you out to the break wall, which is a Coast Guard station. If you want to take a peek, just do the roundabout. hands on the bars and this is the bridge that I've read several complaints about because of the narrow path uh, if you meet someone head-on it's a little challenging honestly unless it happens today uh, all right on the other side of the bridge uh, you could literally turn left on center ride on the street, turn right on Columbus, and go over the Columbus Bridge and you're there. But we're gonna do the Centennial Link Trail. So which is nice newly paved Centennial Link. So there is center, and you'll see that on your map. You could actually ride down center and hang a right at Columbus. And you stay Columbus 
back to Franklin. Oh, we're gonna ride the trail. Centennial Lake, Centennial Trail, Lake Link. Say that five times very fast. Up here is a little navigational uh, turn left on the street right here where the trail ends momentarily on Detroit the Trail. I hear the bell ringing so I don't know if the bridge is going up or not. So this would be the center street bridge on our right we're going across. So we're turning right here. Hands on bars. So just for the here. sake of navigation, we cross over Merwin. We keep riding. Two more streets. Your landmark is the Sunoco station. All right, so we're here at the corner of Columbus and Center. So a couple things you could do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn right and go down Columbus and we're gonna head back towards that big green bridge that I talked about before. And, uh, or you can continue on Center and go up one more street and that's gonna be Carter. Go over the Carter turn right, go over the Carter Road Bridge and you're gonna see the towpath trail there. But we're going to go down Columbus, uh, point out the foundry, another strip sign, go back over the Green Bridge, and we'll turn left and we'll be on the Centennial Link Trail and we'll go underneath the Hope Memorial Bridge and on our way back up the hill to Tree All right, on our way down Columbus Road. And actually, the towpath trail is just on the other side of that parking lot that follows the river. I just think this is one of those simplest way to navigate. Other than the fact that it looks like the bridge is up. So just before we'll we cross over the bridge, there's a building on your left called the Foundry. It's a fitness and rowing facility. And in the back of the building, you'll find another one of the famous Cleveland script signs. We're gonna check it out real quick while the bridge is uh, up. There she is. Everybody's working on the river. And you see the bridge is slowly coming down. Brick and barrel, by the way. Great beer. Ding, 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 ding. All right, so we're back to the Centennial Link at uh, Columbus and Franklin, and so we've made our full loop and we're headed back to Lock 39. So we're back here at Lock 39. Um, I hope you enjoyed your ride today or in the future on the towpath and the Ohio to Erie Trail. 
I hope this video helps you navigate those last few miles into Cleveland or out of Cleveland, whatever the case may be. And again, just get out there and ride. Bike Ohio 1000. Todd, have a great day.